Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be starting out with a quick uh, update. So I haven't been uploaded, uh, uploading consistently lately, and that is because I have been feeling a bit sick. But I've also had a full-time job that I have to take care of. Uh, that's for this past week as well as next six weeks. So in this time, there'll be limited uploads as I'll be busy doing a full-time job. I'll try and do my uploads as much as possible, but specifically Monday and Tuesday will be difficult. For this update, we'll start out in the Zaporizhia front where there are still consistent updates that Ukrainians keep gathering more and more soldiers and troops to this front. And as I've mentioned earlier, it is most likely either for a defensive operation, fearing a Russian offensive, or for planning their own offensive towards Melitopol as the target. Uh, if you want to have more information on that, I have a video where the Ukrainians, where I analyze a potential Ukrainian advance on uh, Melitopol, and I also have a video where I analyze a potential Russian offensive towards Saporizhia. Now, moving on to the actual updates, we see that around the Volodar front, the, uh, the Russian army are fighting around Prestyestivka as well as Favlivka. And this area between Mikilsky and Novomikhailivka, where towards the end, where they are trying to get control over this road to prevent any supplies going through it, which will force the Ukrainians to go through this open field without any actual roads. There are still some minor roads, but these are actually not paved roads, but just uh, rocks and sand, which means that they will also be muddy. So generally, the Ukrainians will be moving through muddy roads to actually pass through and get supplies and reinforcements to the front line, while the Russians are having full fire control over this road between Konstantinivka and Volodar. Further to the east, we see around Novomikhailivka that the Russians are still advancing here. Back at Pavlivka, the Russians are advancing from three different directions, from the east, from the south, and from the west, and they've managed to capture about half of the city, according to Ryber. And that's it for the Vulodar Front update. As for the mobilization, so far the Russians have mobilized 82,000 troops who have, who have now entered combat service on the front line, while 212,000 are still undergoing training. Now, there are two options with these 212,000, either that they are being used Either that they're preparing to be used in other fronts, like the Eastern Front around Kharkiv, or the Northern Front from Belarus into Ukraine, or that they'll just be sent after more training. Now, there's this one message on Twitter, where this guy, I'm not sure about how reliable this source is, as it is a random person on Twitter. However, he does say that uh, he has a relative in Russia who has been mobilized, and that he will be sent to the front line by the end of November after two months of training, which is very interesting because if this is true, I will take it with a pinch of salt, but there's still a chance that this is true, which is why I'm reporting on it. If this is true, it means that the initial reports by Putin himself that the mobilized troops received two to three weeks of training is false and some are actually receiving up to two months of training. And you have to remember, these are tr these are people, soldiers, who have gone through conscription and have gone through their training. And these are troops who have been conscripted from over a year ago, which means that they've received three years of conscription training. This means that these troops are troops who have gone through the full training and are getting a reminder training, which usually should only take these two to three weeks. But it seems that some are getting all... Some are getting the large package, which is two months. And at the same time, he also mentions in a later reply that uh, there's, a, there's a separation between the quality of weapons being sent to different troops based on the quality of the troops. Like he says here, my friend is in Kazan and he has a T-80BV because he is a, from a battalion of war veterans from Georgia. But then he, we can also find two T-62M in lower quality units, which are mostly... DPR and LPR units who have been incorporated into the Russian army, as well as others who have been mobilized and haven't received a lot of training. So with that in mind, we see that the high quality Russian troops are, have high equipment, while the low quality have low quality equipment, and that 
some are receiving more training than others. While at the same time, we also see here in other news that the Ameri we see that the Russians have actually managed to hack the U.S. Delta Command and Control uh, of Ukraine. So they know all Ukrainian positions as well as they know where the Ukrainians have positioned the Russian positions based on their intelligence. So basically, they have they have a complete overview of both sides' troops as well as tactics and everything that they have been used on this platform and this delta command platform is actually the platform they use to make all the strategies and the plans for the whole operation which means that russia now has information on all ukrainian plans as well as strategies that they're using in this war as well as the positions of all the ukrainian troops which could explain why the russians have successfully managed to defend and attack different positions throughout these past couple months since since lightest uh, Ukrainian offensive. With all this in mind, we now see that the Ukrainian soldiers have been spread thinly across the whole border as they have been forced to send troops to the northern front as well as the eastern front, and that the Russians now have doubled their amount of soldiers that they had at the start of the operation. So generally, we would see we are seeing the the whole tide of the war switching in Russia's favor, and that. The whole situation is changing as we speak. Now, I made a video about the changing point, I think, either two or three weeks ago, and I still stand by it. I think the whole situation in this war is switched in Russia's favor. As for the situation in the Luhansk front, there's been no updates since the last one. Generally, all the Ukrainian probing attacks have failed. They have not managed to find a weak point in the Russian defenses which means that the Russians have managed to successfully create a defensive position that is unbeatable by the Ukrainians, at the very least without very long and large preparations. As well as in the Kherson front, we see the same trend, that the Ukrainians have failed to manage any breakthroughs since the last update, and that the Russians have now successfully created a good defensive position. In other news around the Kherson region, yeah, we know that the Kherson city has successfully evacuated all of the citizens from the city, which means that on this on this western bank of the Dnipro River, there is no civilians, there's only Russian soldiers against Ukrainian soldiers, which means that any attacks on this area are legitimate targets, as well as uh, the Russians fully committing to the defense of this western bank of the Dnieper River, as they have kept all of their soldiers here on this area, as well as sending more reinforcements. The amount of Russian troops in this area is estimated to have doubled since two months ago, which means that the Russians are now ready to completely fight and keep and stand their ground in this region, which means that I predict that the Ukrainians will not be able to push any further on this front, as the Russians have successfully created defensive positions and reinforced these defensive positions to prevent the Ukrainians from breaking through. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.